Lab 2, microscopy. This lab is not going to be done on Simutex slash Symbio. We are going to use a second website to do this one. So nothing on uh, Simutex, the Simutex website this week. Uh, what you will be quizzed on, let me be a little more clear about that one because this is a more unusual lab since we won't be using Simutex. Uh, number one, bullet one, label the parts of the microscope, briefly describe their functions. So pay attention on the website you go, you go to, read everything that there is. Bullet two, describe what a plan low power diagram uh, is and what a high power diagram is. I will explain that in this video. And bullet three, describe how a slide can be viewed using a light microscope. That is basically covered in the lab. So you'll need to go through all the steps and um, conscientiously pay attention to what's going on and you'll have no problem with the quiz. What to turn in from this website right here. Now, let me repeat this two times. You do not need to type in this web address trying to copy all of those letters. Say it again. You do not need to try to type in every single one of these letters into the web address on your web browser. You can look at the PPT that is uploaded in week two and just copy paste it or control click. So you can uh, extract this whole web address from the PPT. Okay, bullet one, a screenshot of at view checklist and the through view checklist. I'll explain what those are in a moment. A low power plan diagram of the onion slide. I'm gonna show you how to do that. You'll need to take a picture of it with your phone or a camera and paste that into a Word document or if you have a, a Mac, the Mac version of Word. Um, I suggest you save it as a PDF. Bullet three, a high power draw, uh, drawing of three cells of the onion slide and then also a low, uh, let me say that again, and also a high power, both of them are high power, Last one, a high power drawing of three cells of the cheek smear. I'm going to give you a couple of examples. How to turn this assignment in. You're going to be turning it in on Blackboard. There'll be a link uh, in the week two folder. Basically, put everything on a single document, one document only. Most problem free way to do that is to save it as a PDF because all computers can read PDFs equally well. When you Click on the link that is in the PPT that I went over before. Um, put it into your web browser. You are going to be brought to a, uh, a page that looks basically just like this. You'll hear a kind of a, a robot voice talking you through um, an in a brief introduction. If you'd like, you can take this tour. You can take this tour and it'll explain to you how to do these things. So you may you may need to do that. Um, if you're a little, if you're kind of good at problem solving websites, then you can probably just get started right away. Uh, look at all the things that there are available. You can click on pretty much everything that there is here. Uh, I'll go through a few of them now. Over here on the right, that is where, top right here, that's where there are four different slides to choose from. You're gonna need the um, two slides I listed already. So you'll need to get those from there. Uh, this uh dial here is how you uh, uh, adjust the magnification. There's a 4 in blue in the back, then uh, 10, 40, and 100. The ocular lens here, that has another 10x of magnifying power that is always built into it in pretty much every microscope. This microscope, you can see that there is one, two eyepieces to look through for two eyeballs. Some microscopes just have one. Because this is two, what that means is you'll need to adjust the distance between them together, and that's because everybody has different, you know, sized heads and faces. So the uh, ocular eyepieces here, those can be adjusted to fit uh, fit you. So you'll have to be able to do that. Just grab on them and grab them with the mouse, hold down the clicker, and then move them left and right. Uh, over here, let's see, looking at the bottom of the microscope. This is the base. And firstly, you got to turn it on. Secondly, there is uh, this knob here. It's called the rheostat, and it adjusts how much light is going to come through the microscope. Turns more and less light on. 
Uh, the light then is, if you can follow this red line, I know it's a little hard to follow that, but that's what we've got. That's all we got here. Um, the light comes out of the light source here. Then there is this fellow right here called the diaphragm. I always forget what that one's called. I always have to reread it. It's the diaphragm, and it basically lets more or less light up from the light source onto the actual microscope slide there. So you can adjust that left and right, and it'll bring more and less light in. You'll have to experiment with what the effects of that are. Next, uh, these two dials here move the stage uh, left and right, forward and backward. These two are the rough and fine, or I should say coarse and fine adjustment for focus. The big one is the coarse adjustment, and you should only use the coarse adjustment when you're on the lower power magnifications. When you get up to the really high powered ones, so so you set the um, set it to a hundred here, the lens is really close to the microscope, and if you use the coarse adjustment on high power, you can actually press the um, the lens through the slide, breaking one or both of them. So on high power, you're going to want to use this small adjustment knob, which is called the fine focus, and it just moves the stage up and down a little bit. The coarse adjustment on the left, this, uh, this, this big up and down arrow, that moves the stage up and down more rapidly. So you can kind of smush things together sometimes. Okay, um, look at the upper left part of this slide. You are looking at the microscope. And that's pretty obvious. Then here, right below it, you can click on that and it'll switch views. So this is the, um, where is it? The at view uh, setting, at view, because you're looking at the microscope. So it's the view of the microscope. And there's this checklist. And you're going to need to figure out a way to get all of those a green, uh, a green check and then submit that in your file that you turn in on Blackboard. And once you've done it correctly, there'll be a, a green checklist check will appear there. If you need to check the through view, what you do is you're going to go up here and click on switch views. And then you'll be moved to another field of view that tries to basically simulate um, actually looking through the eyepieces. And then you'll need to adjust some things to make uh, make all of these checks come here. So did you adjust the oculars? That means these two two fellows up here so that uh, instead of seeing two kind of weird circles, you see just one. Have you adjusted the coarse focus, the uh, iris diaphragm that is right down here, I mentioned that, uh, the fine focus, and then also have you centered the image? All right, you can see I managed to get all the at view checklists done, and then I clicked switch view here, and now I'm looking through the microscope, as it says on the top left. I'm looking through the microscope. This is the onion slide, and um, just take a note here. They, the, the makers of this website have added a red circle there. So you need to, when you go to the high power, you need to uh, center this red circle. Uh, in the middle because that's the only part of this onion slide that they have actually, um, I guess, adjusted the software so that you can zoom in on it. So make sure this red circle that I've now circled again is right in the middle. That'll make your high power uh, magnification make sense. Okay, um, so again here to get through all of these through view checklists, you need to experiment with moving all of these various uh, manipulatables, the focus, the stage, left, right, forward, back, all that. This is, these are all the things that you need to remember about the microscope. I'm not going to go through all of them. A, f a few things, though. Uh, number one, anatomy of a microscope. If you're in a lab, you need to not grab the microscope by just anywhere. It should generally, generally be lifted by putting one hand under the base of the microscope, this is the base, and then you can put the other hand on, sometimes this is called the head, sometimes it's called the neck of the microscope. That's depending on the microscope type, another place that you can pick up the microscope. 
Uh, next, notice they, and this is one of the reasons this thing is something I always forget too, is it called the diaphragm or the condenser? It adjusts the light. I'm not going to ask that you memorize exactly what it is because uh, it is kind of annoying that they call it different things. Condenser or diaphragm. This is the light source from here. Uh, you can adjust the brightness right there. It's also called the rheostat. And here, coarse and fine adjustment. That's for focus, and it moves the stage. That's this black thing, the black square thing. I'm kind of moving the cursor around on now. It moves it up and down. And so you can see right now that the uh, magnification lens, the objective lens here, is right, it's really, really close to the stage. So if you use the coarse adjustment to move the stage up, you might smash it into the objective lens. That's bad. And lastly, here we have the ocular lens. So biological drawings, both low and high power. Uh, I'm gonna just click through these bullet points and you can pause it and read through them. I'm not gonna read them to you. They're pretty self-explanatory mostly. Uh, if any of them aren't, I can't remember, I'll explain them. All right, title, use a pencil. Don't shade, okay, I will say this one because this is the number one mistake students make. Do not shade in anything. This is not coloring. You're just going to use clear, continuous lines to do outlines of anything you're drawing. No shading, no coloring either. Drawings must be proportional. About this, proportional, you do not, this is not art class. I'm only simply asking that, for example, if I drew something like this and I asked you to draw it, you should be able to determine, for example, that its width is approximately i'm gonna let's see i'm gonna approximate the width to length ratio myself i'd say that it is about three times long as it is wide so if you do something like this to uh and, and when i asked you to draw the, the diagram on the left that's just totally wrong you don't have to do it perfectly so if you did something like um this that would be fine. I would say this area kind of made a mistake there. That's why you do it with pencil so that you can erase it and then correct it because it should be more rounded like so. So not looking for an exact replica, just your best effort, roughly proportional. Label lines should not cross over each other. Uh, write the magnification at the bottom of the drawing. That's, that is the power of the ocular lens, which is always 10. Then your objective lens could be 4, 10, 40, or 100. So both of those. Um, and you have to um, multiply the magnification of the eyepiece or ocular lens, which is 10, 10x. It's always there in the ocular. And then if you are, for example, you have the low power, so that would be 4x. So that means total magnification would be 40. 10x times 4x equals 40x. That is the total magnification. Uh, well, just one more example. If you are on the high magnification, which is 100, remember the eyepiece magnifies it 10 times. The uh, objective lens on high power is going to magnify it 100 times. So that is a total magnification of 10x times 100x. Sorry, I didn't do an extra zero there. The objective lens is 100x, the eyepiece is 10x, so 10x times 100 equals 1,000. Your total magnification would be 1,000x. All right, uh, these ones are going to go faster. There we go. Um, and then I'm going to give you some examples. So pause this. Um, you can also look at the PPT that is on week two and just go through it. Okay, now I'll give you an example. So low power diagram. This is low power. This is a plan diagram. This is when your microscope is set on 4x. So this is an example here that has already been done. If you were looking at what is shown right here, this is a cross section of a root, um, excuse me, a stem. And you don't need to, because it takes a really long time to do these, if you're gonna draw the entire thing, you can draw simply a representative Portion. Notice that the cross section of the stem here, it has a lot of repeating structures. So there's this uh, vascular bundle here. You don't need to memorize what it's called. Then there's another one and another and another and another. You can just draw a representative uh, section of them. So 
Here, we've chosen to draw just this section with a plan diagram. You're going to be asked, and the onion slide is really easy, and I'm going to show you how to do it, so it's pretty easy. Anyway, uh, you need to think about what is a tissue versus what is individual cells and what is um, what, where are the borders between these cell types. So here we can identify that there's an outer layer of cells here because there is a greater density of something. It looks just sort of dark. And if you were and if you looking at that said something, I'm not sure what it is. You can simply draw something just like this, the ep and, and you wouldn't have to label this as the epidermis because this is my plant physiology course, but you just draw one line on the outside to show that's the outside, one line on the inside to show that that is the inner border between that cell type and the next one. Finally, these vascular bundles, you would just look for different cell types. So again, uh, let me direct your attention down to the bottom left here of the 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 real image here you can notice pretty easily that there's some bigger cells here and then there's another layer perhaps here finally you do not need to be perfect about identifying these so i have divided this uh this circle or vascular bundle into let's see one two three i put three lines in here up here on this person's drawing, they put one, two, sort of three, they put sort of a circle in the middle here, and that is simply their interpretation. You're not going to be asked to make uh, that difficult uh, judgment calls. Only outline the tissues. Individual cells should never be included. So notice here, uh, all those little cells there, you would not uh, draw a bunch of, like if I was trying to draw that, redraw that oval, I wouldn't draw all those individual cells. Never draw individual cells. Bad. Carefully determine where one tissue ends and another begins. Okay, so this is about what you will see. And again, uh, I am really not going, if you are in doubt, probably I am not going to deduct, deduct you any points for how you draw your low power plan diagram as long as you reasonably follow the directions. You'll be surprised how easy it is. So firstly, there's an outside of this thing. Okay, that's pretty obvious. I think everybody would have gotten that one. Next, is there some kind of a, what, what is the next layer in? What I would say is that clearly there seems to be a layer between different cell types right here. So I would draw a line there. And again, try to draw it carefully and slowly. And how, ooh, I kind of made a mistake right there. If this was a pencil, I would erase that and get rid of that sort of angular corner there. That, that's bad. So that's why you gotta do this with a, with a, uh, with a uh, pencil. This right here, I would not deduct the student points for drawing that, okay? Totally fine. This is not a difficult thing to do. If you then said, you know what, I think there's another border of cells, and I think it's about right here, and you added another line, something like that. Yep, also fine. Also fine. And in truth, there are uh, different cell types right in there, but you are not expected to know that. Just decide on how many different uh, cell cell types do you really do you think there are here you could even add more such as right here and then here these cells clearly look different the slide you see of a of an onion root tip will be a little bit different than this so again i'm not asking for perfection here just your interpretation of where are the groups of cells that seem to sort of look the same like this one right here, that line of cells, that pretty clearly looks different. So I might add another one here. Last time I had, uh, I, I taught this lab, I had most of my students submit something that looked about like that, and I didn't dock any of them any credit. It's a totally fine job. Um, I, I erased that last line, like I said, because I got a little sloppy, and do this. Is that good? Yeah, there we go. That's about proportional 
to the thickness of that outer cell type. All right, so I hope I'm not being too outrageously obvious here, but that's about it, what you need to do. Um, a bad uh, a, a bad example, so here's, here's brownie face, would be something like uh, you did it really small, firstly, and then you committed the most significant error, which is you started drawing individual cells. This is going to lose you points. Uh, clearly said, no individual cells should be drawn. Another thing is this. So here's bad example number one, bad. Here's another bad example. Uh, students like to kind of draw the outlines. This isn't drawing. You want to try to uh, draw one singular clear line. So this also going to get you, uh, going to result in a loss of point. Then you start doing this. Nope. Not not like that. It might even be a better looking drawing, but it is simply not in accordance with how microscopy drawings are done. Sorry. I know some of you could probably do a better drawing than that, but that's just, that's how it is. Okay, high, high power diagram. This is fantastically boring. Look at that. On the left, this example is showing these three cells drawn. You do not need to draw all the cells. Uh, two, three, four, or five cells, something like that. Three is a great number uh, looking at looking here. Um, one of the most common mistakes students will make is they will color in the nucleus as a solid blob. That is bad. Do not do that. Simply draw outlines of the major parts of the cell that you can see, whatever they are, and don't make things up. Typically, in plant cells, you're going to be able to see the cell wall. Maybe the cell membrane or the, the border between the cell membrane and the outside, which is the, well, the, the cytoplasm that is on the inside. And then you'll probably be able to see the nucleus. In an animal cell, you're going to draw cheek cells, so you want, will not see a cell wall. Okay, I am now going to do a much more difficult plan diagram for you. Like I said, the onion diagram that you guys are going to do is going to look something like this. Okay, something like that. Do a better job than that, but it's going to be that simple. Uh, I just want to give you an example simply to show you that you don't have to be perfect. So if I was drawing this on an exam, then what I would try to do is look at where most of the borders between the different cell types are. So I would draw something like that and then ah oh boy so what i just drew was this border right there this is an an oocyte this is a egg cell being produced in a mammal and then i would draw another border there oh, that's a little kind of bad there okay that looks okay and then i'll draw an inside layer Uh oh, that was a mistake. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And then there's clearly a, another kind of border right there. Yeah, I'm going to stick with that. And, oh boy, it's getting kind of hard, isn't it? So, yeah, it's hard for me too. Don't worry, the one you do, onion, it's just two lines basically. So then I've got this. So what I've drawn, drawn now is this. Oops, and then this right there. Okay. Um, okay, full full admission. If this was a test, I'd be going slower if I was actually having taken a test. So I'm um, speeding this up a bit because I you know I know you guys want to get on with your day. Let me try drawing the circle again. Boy, it keeps erasing itself. There you go. Alright, so it'd be about like that. And okay, I guess I gotta draw this. Uh, draw that line right there. No, I did draw that one already. This one? Yeah, I'm going to draw that. So I kind of get cut off down there. Like so. All right. So feel free to send me a picture of your drawings if you're really uncertain about them, and I'll give you a yay or nay on them. Uh, this one as well. So this one, if I was had asked you to do a high power diagram of this, then, again, you're only going to draw cell types, and I would tell you what cells to draw. I would say, you're going to be drawing 
these cells. This is, a, by the way, part of the kidney, or it could be part of the kidney anyway. So I'd say draw a high power diagram of these cells. So I'd say select three of them. Let's go with that one, that one, and that one. So those three cells, we're going to draw them large, roughly proportional, as proportional as you can be. And draw the nucleus. That's cell number one, cell number two. And cell number three. Okay, this one kind of looks like it sort of capers at the end there. Okay. And the only thing you'd really be able to label here would be cell, uh, excuse me, I was about to write cell membrane. That is the nucleus. And this is the cell membrane. Membrane. Okay, uh, fairly self-explanatory. These examples are all a little bit harder than the ones that you guys are going to draw. So, um, again, email me. Feel free to email me a picture of yours as you're drawing them, and I'll give you some feedback.